Hey guys, it's Libby, and this is the day after I filmed my um, Othello video. <laughs> that took me over two hours, all things put together. I had to stop um, filming twice, once to empty my SD card and once to recharge the camera. Um, and I talked a lot, and um, I, I think it may have made me ill, because I can't really talk today, um, which means I can't really do my job, which is being a voice actor. Um, this is not the voice of Mary Crawford, who I'm currently playing in Mansfield Park. Um, so I, I decided instead I will make um, a, a gentle, easy, fun video um, that I wanted to do for a while. And that is to talk about the um, historical clothing that people are wearing in um, historical fiction and historical fantasy um, book covers. I'm a historical costumer right now. I'm working on a gothic fitted dress from the 1370s in a nice um, royal blue wool broadcloth, um, but I thought maybe I would take a break from that to um, quietly, calmly, gently for my throat um, talk about um, some other book covers and uh, rate them. So the first one I've got is Queen Victoria's Book of Spells, which is a collection of gas lamp fantasy edited by Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling. Since this is historical fantasy, I'm going to give a pass to the top hat and the undressed hair, um, and I also can't really see what's going on with this man's coat, so he'll also get a pass. So looking at the thing that the woman is wearing, um, the fabric looks good. It looks like silk, and the lace is pretty appropriate for this time period. I'm not totally convinced by the all-lace collar um, coming up out of this silk um, bodice. Um, I do like the pleating on the front and then the shirring at the waist um, of the of the lighter colored piece in the center. Um, that's putting us in the 1880s or early 1890s, um, which then causes some other problems. So one, the skirt. It really doesn't look like there's any backwards, any bustle action going on. Um, which you would expect for this time period. But the thing that is really sticking out at me is the boob shape. We're gonna talk a lot about boob shape in this video because this is a boob shape that is created by a modern bra, not a corset. So the difference is a modern bra, when you're wearing one, the silhouette from the side is a gentle slope downwards and then a dramatic slope on the bottom. Whereas when you're wearing a corset, it's a more dramatic slope at the top and then a gentle slope downwards to the waist. And also when you're wearing a corset, the breasts are a lot higher up, and this is just absolutely not correct. Um, I also don't really like the end of the sleeve where we have the, the fashion fabric folded back, creating a cuff that's maybe a little bit too long, and then we have like a little bit of lace sticking out. Mm -mm. If these are fingerless gloves, they should be going farther up onto her hand, and if it's just a cuff, um, it shouldn't be there, and it shouldn't have buttons given the other sort of cuff stuff that's going on. So I give um, Queen Victoria's Book of Spells a C. Next we have another historically inspired fantasy, so I, I will give it a couple of passes, and that is The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Um, so this is, um, uh, I have read this, and it's a little bit difficult to know when it's said, but we're presumably around the 5th century um, in Britain, of course. So first off, I'm not totally sure that they had the ability to dye things black at this time period. Um, black is a really hard uh, color to dye clothes in, especially in a way that will last. So I'm not loving the black. It does look like it's a wool, though, which is appropriate for a dress of this time period. Um, purple, also a really hard color to get. Not sure we'd have it in the British Isles at this time period, and this fabric looks kind of silky on the purple um, ribbons, so... and they, I, they didn't have silk. I mean, you had to be up to your eyeballs in money in order to afford silk at this time in this location, so that part's not so great. Also, it, technically, uh, I believe this is 
Morgaine. Um, she should have something covering her hair, and her hair should be up and dressed, but she is a, a magical priestess, so um, I'll give them a, a pass for that. Mainly, I'm concerned about the way the fabric is draping across her legs so that you can so clearly see her legs, um, which indicates that she's not wearing anything underneath this, and you also can't see any um, sort of smock sticking out at the sleeves or at the neckline, um, that would not happen. You would not just wear a wool dress. You're going to have linen underneath to absorb all of your disgusting body sweat. Also, the waistline does not make sense because we've got this horizontal belt slash ribbon. That one's fine, but then we have this diagonal one coming up. Why how have you arranged it so that it's coming up in the back? If anything, it should be going down because you're tying it in the front and so the knot should be pulling it down. So I think the Mists of Avalon is also getting a C. Now let's move on to one that is kind of cheating. That is um, Carol by Patricia Highsmith. I wasn't able to find any information about this inside of the book, but I'm reasonably certain that this is an actual photograph from the 1950s, um, which is when this book is set. This wool tweed dress is looking good. The hairstyle is looking good. Also, the vermilion lipstick is what's telling me this is actual 1950s, um, because vermilion is not a very popular color anymore. So Carol by Patricia Highsmith gets an A. Okay, going back to historically inspired fantasy, this is um, Sophia Samatar's A Stranger in a Laundria. Um, I haven't read this, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but it looks like we are um, in the 18th century, and we are kind of a little bit further east. Um, I'd say the furthest west we could be with this sort of architecture is Italy. So the jacket shape is pretty good. Um, the embroidery or whatever sort of decoration is going on is not 18th century, but since this is fantasy, I'm willing to be fairly lenient there. Um, he's not wearing a waistcoat under his jacket, which would conceal most of his shirt. Um, instead, he's wearing like a cummerbund. I'm not totally convinced by that. Also, the sleeves of his jacket are too short, um, revealing the cuffs of his shirt. Uh, but the hair and the closely shaven face is still good, so uh, Stranger in a Laundry gets a B from me. Uh, next up we have the book that I am currently reading. It is Marianne by Daphne du Maurier. Now, since I'm currently reading this, I happen to know that this is set in the late 18th and early 19th century, so I am completely confused as to why there is a woman wearing a dress that is completely 1850s on the cover. This sort of um, wide pagoda sleeve, the shoulder decoration, the tiered skirt, these are all hallmarks of the 1850s. Also, um, it's not even an original colored photograph from the 1850s. You can tell because her eyebrow is manicured. Manicured eyebrows, immediate giveaway for um, modern photograph. And also, this dress does not fit the model. Uh, one, she's not wearing enough skirt supports. The skirts need to be sticking out farther. Um, and two, she's probably not actually wearing a corset because you can see there's some sort of wrinkling going on in the armpit area, which means there's too much fabric because her boobs are supposed to be up there as opposed to where they are. Also, you can kind of see the laces sticking out on the back, but um, back lacing is period correct for the 1850s. Um, but still, they didn't do the dress very well, and it's for a completely different time period than, than when this book uh, is happening. So I think I'm gonna fail, Marianne. I need to go back to the drawing board with this cover design. Next, The Book of Speculation by Erica Swyler. Now, I fortunately happened to um, randomly open this book and see the date 1790 somewhere, so I know that we are in the late 18th century. Um, I think most of the book is not set in the, I think most of the book is modern day. Um, but uh, this dress looks pretty close to what people were wearing in the 1790s. But there are a couple of issues that I see. Um, first off, I'm assuming that she's intended to look uh, distressed, um, and that's why one of her sleeves is missing, um, and that's why her sash is askew. Um, I really don't like the silhouette. The skirts need to be poofing out a whole lot more around the hips. I also don't like how it's slouchy right above the waistline and then narrows in. It should either be that slouchy looking all the way up the torso 
or um, it should be coming in at the waistline because it's more fitted. The fabric, since it's black, it's really hard to see what's going on, but it looks like either a linen or a cotton, which is good. Uh, the jewelry that she's wearing on her wrists bears no relationship to anything from the 18th century that I've seen. Um, and also this sleeve trim, um, I don't think that they would actually have a sleeve trim that matches the sash. And if you're gonna have, if you are gonna have that sleeve trim matching the sash, then you should not have the gathered net underneath it. Both of those is definitely wrong. Um, also, I think think that that net should be white and also not net it should be linen which means you'd have to have a rolled hem and here you can see that there is no indication of a hem it's just been cut and left which you can do with net but you can't do with normal fabric so book of speculation decent effort it helps that i can't see a whole lot of it i'm gonna give it a c plus next we have sula by tony morrison um, i'm pretty sure that this is not a period drawing i think it was drawn um, for this book and it's supposed to be late 30s early 40s. That's when this book is set um, So I like the um, overdrawn lips, but I think there should be some eyeliner apparent um, I like the fox stole. Um, I like the silhouette of the dress and also the um, Fake light or bake light jewelry. I'm not totally sure if that if actual bake light um, was being used this early, but it's close enough to actual 1940s jewelry. Um, so the silhouette is good. I don't think I'm in love with the fabric. I don't think that this is a 1940s style of fabric. Um, the hair is good. It looks like it's sort of dressed in the back and maybe a snood, and we got some waves going on on the side. That's perfect. Um, the hat is, it doesn't immediately scream 30s, 40s to me, but it's close enough. So the only problem we have here is the most obvious part of the costume, which is the fabric of the dress. So if I allow that to overwhelm me, this is a C plus, but if I just take it as one point among many, uh, I'd give this a B. Okay, now we have The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. Um, so this is set in the mid 18th century and it's about female bare knuckle boxers. So I'm okay with the hair being down, although normally I would not be because when you're boxing, you got a box. But I actually looked up what this picture is and it is Girl with a Basket by Boleslaw Stankowski. So it's Eastern European instead of Western European. This is, I believe, set in London. And it's depicting a girl of 1910, not of the 1740s, which is why a lot of this is wrong. Um, I think the lip color is wrong. That may have just been artist's prerogative trying to make her look sexier, um, but I don't think we would have had exactly this shade of red lip um, for the uh, mid 18th century. Also, don't think a bare knuckle boxer would be wearing lipstick. Also, this um, band that her chemise has been gathered into, that's a 19th and 20th century thing, not an 18th century thing, as is the little slit that's been tied closed in the front. And finally, this thing that I think they're trying to convince us is a corset is not a corset. First off, it's completely unboned. The strap isn't attaching in the right way. It should either come naturally out of the bodice part and tie in the back, or it should be coming out of the bodice in the back and tying at the front, not like buttoning or whatever thing is going on here. So I think this cover does grab your attention and this architecture might be okay, but um, the, the woman is a woman from 1910, not 1740. I'm gonna fail uh, The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman. And the last one we have here is The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. So we're also set in Amsterdam. I'm a little bit later in the uh, 17th century. So this is a great dress. I like the, um, the little bit of the, this particular Dutch style of cap that you can see. I would totally believe that this has been taken from an actual um, portrait based on the sort of very precise hand gesture that you see in portraits at the time. The makeup giving her rosy colored cheeks is good. The giant ruff is good. Um, I'm a little bit confused about this sort of diagonal crisscross cut that's going on with the bodice, but it is a plot point in this book that Petronella is given a dress that is too big for her. So maybe it fits across the bust, but it's too big at the waist, and so she's had to sort of adjust it. And then the really smooth line of the torso 
torso and this sort of conical skirt shape is all really good for the beginning of the 17th century. This is great. I'm pretty sure they took it from a, an original portrait, but it's at least 50 years too early for the time that this book is taking place. And I don't understand how you can have been that careful as to pick this perfect portrait from the wrong time. I'm kind of flabbergasted. I give it, I would give it uh, an A if it was set in the first quarter of the, uh, of the 17th century, but since it's set in the last quarter, give it a D. Pay attention to the date of the book. Okay, that was mainly disappointing, but I hope helpful and educational for you guys. Um, these are pretty much all of the books that I have with um, people in historical clothing, but if you guys have books um, that you would like me to comment on, uh, I may make another of these videos, so um, put in the comments um, uh, what the book title is. If there's multiple covers and you want me to talk about a specific cover, maybe include the link to the Goodreads page for that book, um, and uh, if it's not completely obvious, maybe me, give me a, a when and a where this is taking place, because as you can see, it does matter when the book is set. So I look forward to seeing your either very good or hilariously awful uh, historical costumes on book covers. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.